Hello everyone. Welcome to St Mark's Online. This video uploaded for Sunday the 30th of August AD 2020. Hello to you, whoever you are and wherever you are. It's good to be together in this virtual space. I want to begin with the hymn Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven, which I read as a poem for us. I know I have used it before. There's a giveaway. It's a favourite. But it also fits Psalm 103, which we'll read together shortly. Praise my soul, the King of heaven. To his feet thy tribute bring. Ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven. Who like thee his praise should bring? Praise him, praise the everlasting King. Praise him for his grace and favour to our fathers in distress. Praise him, still the same forever, slow to chide, swift to bless, glorious in his faithfulness. Fatherlike he tends and spares us, well our feeble frame he knows. In his hands he gently bears us, rescues us from all our foes. Praise him, praise him, widely as his mercy flows. Angels, help us to adore him. Ye behold him face to face. Sun and moon bow down before him. Dwell us all in time and space. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise with us, the God of grace. And those who want to do that find access to him through humility of heart. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have broken your holy laws. We have left undone what we ought to have done, and we have done what we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy on us. Spare those who confess their faults. Restore those who repent, as you have promised through Jesus Christ our Lord. And grant, O merciful Father, for his sake, that we may live a godly, righteous and sober life, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our collect is for the day of the twelfth Sunday after Trinity. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we are to pray, and you constantly give more than we desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, by forgiving us those things of which our consciences are afraid, and by giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Psalm 103 Praise the Lord, O my soul. All my, my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbour his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. 
For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those that fear him. For he knows how we are formed, he remembers that we are but dust. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it and it is gone and its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those that fear him and his righteousness with their children's children, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works, everywhere, in his dominion. Praise the Lord, O my soul. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gracious God, loving and compassionate, true and faithful, be merciful to us as we search the scriptures today. For Christ's sake. Amen. Fatherhood can be a painful subject. Many children know little of their male biological parent and the radio and TV response to social issues is to blame government and not to support a dad's crucial role and responsibility. The answer to our problems and the hope for the world, however, remains the gospel. It starts with this word of reconciliation. The angel Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God, tells Zechariah that his son, John the Baptist, would be forerunner to Christ. Quote, to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous. Unquote. That's in Luke 1 verse 17. And Christ spoke relentlessly of God as Father. Twelve times in Matthew 6, twenty times in John 14. Today in our final summer psalm, David says God is like a father. Psalm 103, verse 13. Moses had asked the wayward Hebrews, Is God not your father? in Deuteronomy 32. And the prophet said of God, You are our father in Isaiah 63 and 64. And then Jesus went on to speak of God as Father and to answer the question, how do we pray? You say, our Father. So the whole story of salvation is that of the fatherhood of a nation becoming more and more intimate. Uh, this is so good that our psalm today starts and ends, Praise the Lord, O my soul. Eleven times in total, the word for Lord is written in capital letters in the English Bibles, indicating the covenant-keeping name for the Almighty. And for what purpose will he use his plans and power? I summarise the answer in Three points. Firstly, reviving love. Christianity requires more than a partial or passing interest. The great commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind and all your strength. And the great commission is from Christ who has all authority to go to all nations so that we teach all things and he remains with us by his spirit for all time. You see, he gives all of himself and we respond with all of ourselves. Back to our psalm, praise the Lord, O my soul, 
all my inmost being praise his holy name. It's good to count our blessings, isn't it? Life and faith, family and friends, food and drink, clothes and shelter, freedom and health, work and rest. Now David rouses himself, as Kidna says, to shake off apathy and gloom and say, Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is restored like the eagles. I want to look at several phrases and individual words. To forget not is to bring to mind so that life decisions are fundamentally affected and guided. To be forgiven and healed is that wonderful foretaste of heaven whereby God atones for our guilt but also spares us the consequences of our mistakes. And David could celebrate that even though his own sins brought him sadness and trouble. The fullness of healing, of course, is in the world to come. To redeem from the pit is to buy a slave's freedom, unlike the experience of Joseph, whose brother sold him into captivity. And this freedom is tasted in the new birth in Christ and God's subsequent assistance through angels and providential guidance of life and history. David adds, please remember as Israel's king, that God's people all have a crown of his saving love, satisfaction in service and opportunities in life restored. Love that image of the eagle, that strength able to uh, see from a high position. The Israelites in the wilderness, of course, excelled at forgetting and grumbling. So will we do and be any better? For us and through us, the Lord will work righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. So, reviving love. Second cluster of blessings, cleansing love. The problem of man is the problem of his sin. And so the psalmist homes in on this issue. To think that education, economics, politics and science, important though they all are, will solve our ills is an extraordinary blindness. Relationships remain fractious. Nations are ill at ease. We need the Lord. The missionary to Nineveh knew this. You are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents in sending calamity. Jonah 4 verse 2. And David says the lawgiver knew it. God made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in love. So David in Psalm 103 is quoting Moses in Exodus 34 verse 6, at the end of the wretched episode of the golden calf. Yes, even out of that, the rebellion, the law-breaking and the punishment, God was clearly gracious and compassionate. Two features of God's forgiveness are now highlighted in Psalm 103. Firstly, its context. The Bible does not deal in imaginary guilt trips, with which to trick us into church membership. Rather, it presents the truth of our eternal peril and presents the rescue of a gracious God. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbour his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. If that's the context of what we fully deserve in a moral universe, how about this for the permanence of the solution? Immeasurable distance illustrates the immeasurable love of a long-suffering parent. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, 
so great is his love for those that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. So, now we live life and face death in confidence because of his cleansing love and his reviving love. And that takes us to his enabling love. The result you see is a new reverence for God's naming, God's being, God's doing. In words used at funeral services, we declare that God plucks mortal souls from death. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those that fear him. For he knows how we are formed, he remembers that we are but dust. And this fear is a respectful honour for an infinite and awesome majesty who alone endures forever. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it and it is gone. Its place remembers it no more. This theme, fear, recurs in the psalm. It's not the opposite of love. It's not the absence of love. Still less is it some sort of terrified facing of the judgment throne as we cling desperately to the good habits of life with which we intend to impress God. What nonsense it all is. How futile. No, it's none of these. Instead, it is the response of a life touched by God's love and his rescue, which came to full view in the sacrifice of Christ atoning for sins on the cross. So, David says, from everlasting to everlasting, God's love is with those that fear him and his righteousness to their children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. God's love, you see, creates an obedient life, preparing joyfully for the new heaven and the new earth. And the plan cannot be blocked. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. His kingdom rules over all. In the unseen world, compliance is evident. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding and obey his word. Indeed, the whole universe moves at his command. Praise the Lord, all his works everywhere in his dominion. So what does that mean for us? I pick out... Two applications. One, call God Father. Your Father, my Father. Accept the invitation to do so. Learn with Peter to call him the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 1 Peter 1 verse 3, and to share that fatherhood too. Love him, fear him, thank him, praise him, glorify him. And two, Affirm fathers. May they do well in their work, as 1 Thessalonians 2 puts it, of encouraging, comforting and urging. And to use the observations of Jesus in Luke 11, may they continue to provide fish and egg rather than snake and scorpion, to do the good, to persevere in what is right. So the gospel will change our vision of God and our priorities for culture. May we love this gospel. It proclaims the only perfect father, but he's available to us all. Will you name him as your father too? Let's pray. Gracious God and loving Heavenly Father, thank you for your mercies every morning and grace sufficient for each day. For the Psalms to study and use, for the greater knowledge of you, not least through Christ, for the intimacy you offer, for the cleansing and reviving and enabling love that is your gift to men through the gospel. May we grasp it, live by it and rejoice in it for your name's sake. Amen. Another hymn to use and to aid our response to God in hearing. 
There is a green hill far away without a city wall where the dear Lord was crucified who died to save us all. We may not know, we cannot tell what pains he had to bear, but we believe it was for us he hung and suffered there. He died that we might be forgiven. He died to make us good, that we might go at last to heaven saved by his precious blood. There was no other good enough to pay the price for sin. He only could unlock the gate of heaven and let us in. Oh, dearly, dearly has he loved, and we must love him too, and trust in his redeeming blood, and try his works to do. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We pray for the church worldwide at this challenging time of restrictions on assembly and the expression of our most precious faith. We pray for the faithfulness of bishops and archbishops and the leadership of all clergy, pastors and other lay officers. We pray for those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, not least those who specifically teach and disciple others using every means available. We ask that you protect those persecuted for the faith remembering those who inspire us across the world because of the difficulties they have to bear up under. Bless and guide the Queen and Royal Family and all in authority, knowing that we must all give account to you. Strengthen and protect everyone in public service too. Locally, we pray for the peace and prosperity of the homes, businesses and schools of our parish. We think of those preparing to get back to education and working through exam results and allocating higher education spaces at this time. We pray for those who really struggle with uh, trouble, sickness, sorrow, mental anguish. We remember those who continue to self-isolate and the many carers and helpers. Please comfort those who mourn. And we thank you for those who have fought the good fight of faith to the end, thanking you again for the life and example of Jean Machel. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, we praise you for bringing us safely to the beginning of this day. Defend us with your mighty power and grant that we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but govern and guide us in all our ways, so that we may do what is right in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And another hymn. There is a Redeemer, Jesus, God's own Son, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Holy One. Jesus, my Redeemer, name above all names, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, O oh, for sinners slain. When I stand in glory, I will see his face, and there I'll serve my king forever in that holy place. 
Thank you, O oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving us your Spirit till the work on earth is done. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and all whom you love, both near and far, and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you for remaining in touch with St Mark's and your gifts to the work of God through this church.